in this scenario, I want to go from a list of transactions and try and group them into categories so that Woolworths and Coles would roll up into groceries and anything to do with Air New Zealand or Airways would roll up into flights. So I used Power Query to do this. That's what this video is going to be showing you how I approached it. OK, here we go. Normally, a first step is to get your data into Power Query. So if it's in Excel, then a good thing to do is turn it into a table by pressing Control T. My table has headers. So that's a table sorted there. And I always name my tables as well. So I'm going to go to the Design tab. And up here is the table name. And I'll just call this TBL for table and my source. OK, so that's my source data. I'll just go into my keywords and I'll do the same thing. Highlight that, Control T, my table has headers. OK, so this is the search word. This is the category. And again, I'm going to name this table. Now, I do tables, uh, sorry, I use tables a lot. So I actually add this little name box to my quick access toolbar. So it's over here. So I can always just jump into here and say T TBL keywords, enter, and I can always see what my table is as soon as I click into it. Now, how to add that, you just simply go to your table, go to design, go over to the table name, right click on the word table name and add to your quick access toolbar. Mine's already there, so it's grayed out. OK, so let's um, load up this table to start with. It doesn't matter which order you load them in. So you go to the data tab from table range. I'm clicked inside my table from table range. Just going to load that in and it's loading into Power Query. Here's the table loaded in there and there's my table keywords. I'm just going to rename this as simply keywords. OK, so I'm just going to go close, close and load to and load this as a connection only at this stage. Now, what that means is that that piece of Power Query code is just saved in Excel, but the actual output um, doesn't go anywhere. It's just a connection. I just untick this add to the data model. That's the topic for another time. Click OK. Here's my keywords table. All right, I'll quickly repeat that for my description table and my source data from table range. Here's my, uh, let's call it my transaction listing. There's my transaction listing and there's my list. Okay, so here's a good starting point. And what I'm going to do is actually just reference this. So right click reference. You don't actually have to do this stage for this particular example, but I'm in the habit of keeping that sort of source table untouched and then referencing it to add new stuff because I want to add some columns in here that gives it the categories. So this is going to be called my um, mapped transactions. OK, put an S on the end. Right, so a couple of little techniques here. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing this. And I'll do another video later that actually uses a custom function to do this sort of thing. But if I can, I like using the user interface because it's easier for other people to pick apart and make, understand. Easier for me to understand when I come back to it quickly. Um, so let's show you this way. I'll do another video that shows you a custom function way of doing this as well. What I'm going to do is um, actually add a column. So add a custom column that's going to bring in all the different keywords. So I'm going to say equals keywords, which is the name of the table. So I click OK. And in here, is a full list of all the keywords, which you can see at this little screen down the bottom. So there's, everyone's the same, it's just the keywords. Now when I click expand, and I bring in the search word in the category, and I don't need that original column name, I get a combination of every keyword against 
the description repeated over and over again. Okay, so every keyword against the word coals that it was looking for. So that because there's four or five keywords, there's four and five rows for every item. Now for me, I'd like to actually also, before I get to this step, I want to have a, like a unique ID so that I can sort of collapse this back up. So I'm going to go back a step to the source and add an index column. It doesn't really matter whether you start from zero or one, but I like adding one from one. So I now know these are the 15 different rows. I added the custom, I expanded it. So now I can see I've got this item that's unique here, item number one, item number two, and so on. Um, okay, so I have now got a description and I've got a search word. So I just want to say, if this description contains that search word, then give me this word groceries. So what we can do is we can go to conditional column and let's call this new column my um, actual categories. Okay, so if the description contains the value from the column search word, then give me the value from the column category. Otherwise, and I'll leave that blank, I just want empty. So click OK, actual categories. So Woolworths has been found in there, so it's given me the word groceries. Flights has not been found in there, so it's null. Parking has been found in there, so it's given me the word parking, and so on. So that is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I just want to keep the index and the categories. Right click, remove other columns. So here I've got the index and the categories and I can also get rid of the nulls or remove empty does the same sort of thing. It removes nulls and blanks. So here I've got it. I've got my list of items and my list of categories. Now I've got two number 14s here, groceries and hotel. So let's just go back a step and see what happened. So down to item 14, the actual search word was hotel coals. So there was a match against coals for groceries and a match against hotel. Um, so really you've got to bring in some business logic there about what do you want to do? I'm going to say, okay, the first item it finds, it's going to match against that. So I don't want duplicates. So I'm going to go right click and just say remove duplicates. So it's just only going to give me the first word it finds essentially. So here we have my results, but I want that other information against it. So what do I do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this query with itself, but merge it back to this step. So I'm going to merge it against this column. So that I've got description, the original description, the amount, and then I'll also be able to have the categories. Now it's a bit weird merging something with itself, but it's quite a useful technique for doing this sort of thing. So if I go to home and merge queries, I'll then merge it with itself, the one that says current, the index and the index, and I click OK. But it's merged the remove duplicates step, so the remove duplicate stage with the remove duplicate stage, which isn't what I want. I want to merge the added index stage with a remove duplicate stage. So I'm just going to change this little piece of text here to added index. Make sure I spell it right. And here we have a little table, which if I expand it, I have now got the categories against each of these items. So why have I got this null? It didn't find a match for Wilson parking, but it did find a match for City of Perth parking. Now, looking at the word, I think it's to do with the fact that it's lowercase. So let's just jump back and we'll go to the conditional column step. Here's the Wilson parking section. There's the word parking. Okay, it's trying to find capital parking, capital letter parking against a lowercase parking and it's not finding it. So we have to handle 
to be really safe we need to handle um, just the actual case of the text so um, we could do it a slightly long-winded way we could actually make a go back a few steps make a copy of this description column and lowercase it go back to our keywords and lowercase our search words and then everything will work fine or we can be a little bit fancy and let's amend one of the steps so this conditional column and look you really should rename some of these steps so search for keyword add column okay so we did a search for the keyword and added column so there's a little trick in this text.contains function you've got look in the description column look for the search word there's a little trick you can do you can put a comma after this and then it says compare as nullable function and what you can do is type in ignore because I can never remember the full text of this so compare ordinal ignore case and that should give you the ability to ignore whether it's uppercase or lowercase so let's just click onto the next step and there we go parking has now shown up it is ignoring the case excellent and then we go to the final bit and there's the parking line perfect so we have now got this list we have a list of items we don't need that index number anymore so we can remove that we have our categories so let's just change that to text and we are good to go so what do we do now we go close and load two at this stage i'm going to say connection only only create connection and now i'm going to click on my mapped transactions right click load to load it to a table pick a table and click ok the reason i didn't load it straight to a table is that it would have also loaded one of these this transaction listing as a table as well i just didn't want that so here we have our items mapped as required so let's go and get some more data and see how quickly this runs so control a control a to select all this so we've got about another 10,000 items then i'm going to copy drop onto the bottom of here paste values let's see what the speed's like right click refresh off it goes it's having a think yeah it's a little bit slow okay we can see that's pretty slow so i would have hoped for better performance than that now as we wait and wait and wait we think right what can we do to fix this up because that's probably not acceptable it depends you know it's 10 seconds you've just saved yourself a whole bunch of hours of work potentially but here we go everything seems to be working Woolworths is mapped against groceries Holiday Inn is mapped against hotel City of Perth parking so that's pretty cool and then from that we can create a pivot table and we can create some slices and the pivot charts and summarize all our data so how do we speed this up okay well let's try this instead so let's me just to prove a point let's control z it so control z a couple of times there we go we're back and let's just right click and refresh this so 15 rows pretty quick so let's edit this query so this approach um, I actually read from a book um, written by Gil Raviv uh, excellent book I'll put up a little screenshot of what the book's like if you want to learn power query thoroughly recommend it so what we could do is um, the probable cause is that every time it wants to actually come back and grab the data it's going back to the actual keywords query and querying that from Excel again 
So we only want to query keywords once. So what you can do is this. You go to the advanced editor. Okay. And this is every line of code is each line of the applied steps. Okay. So here we go. All I want to do is I am going to say buffered keywords equals the mystery mysterious table dot buffer function. Okay, and we'll buffer the actual keywords table. And then oh, I'll put a comma, always remember a comma. So then wherever this says each keywords, I'm going to change this to buffered keywords. Because what that should mean for each row, you're only going back to the in-memory version of the keywords. So it should, in theory, work quicker. So nothing should really change in here. Close and load. Okay, so let's get some more data. Control C, paste it on here. Let's see how quick this works. Right click, refresh, done. Split second. So table.buffer can be your friend when you refer to it within the same query, especially when something's running on each row of a table. So that is a refreshable, updatable way of producing sort of summary data from transaction listings. And if I updated my keywords or I had new items, so let's say, for example, I put uh, something in here, new one not listed in keywords, and I refreshed it, right click, refresh. Okay, so it comes through, it's showing as a blank. Um, and if I went into my keywords table and said, okay, anything to do with the word keywords, should be other, come back here, right click, refresh, and then hopefully other should pop up there within a few seconds. So let me know what you think. I'll do another short video showing the Excel filter function that's part of dynamic arrays that can do a similar sort of thing. Um, and then I'll do another video at some point showing how you can use custom functions to do this and some even fancier stuff as well. So keep watching, give me some feedback and hope you have a good week. Thanks.